Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Not too loud there, Troy? Yes. Yeah? Good. It's going to get better. <laughs> well, Reminds me of yesterday. Nice. <laughs> uh, glad to be here with everyone. Does uh, anything before, anyone got any announcements before I go through? We have, I have one that I want to uh, share with all of you. To, uh, we'll also bring Kathy up in her, during our time of prayer, but... Uh, Kathy Gilbert was uh, taken to uh, Lafayette and uh, is in Franciscan and uh, is awaiting on Tuesday is going to be having open heart surgery. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, Saturday um, she was doing a lot better and uh, she was uh, um, uh, taken there but they found that one of the stints had collapsed and she's had some damage to the other arteries so she'll be having open heart surgery on Tuesday at 8 o'clock so please be in prayer for Kathy um, and uh, for the doctors and the nurses and all the health care facility um, that uh, she gets the proper treatment so um, so just keep her in your prayers also we have an anniversary this uh, this week on Thursday Norman Sue Bird have an anniversary so uh, happy anniversary. I should be able to answer how many years that was because I went to the wedding, but I don't know. So if Sue is watching online, she can send it to us. Or ask Norm to put him on the spot. So uh, so let's say happy anniversary to Norm and Sue. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear friends. Happy anniversary to you. Um, also, yesterday was the San Joe Crane Festival, and uh, we were in a new spot, and we had a lot of fun. Um, we had a, a lot of kids come by. We put on games for the kids, uh, turned into a water fight, you know, with the water guns, and um, so it's, I don't know, it's a lot of fun. So it's, kids cheat, that's all I say. Oh, uh, you know, I, so I fired this first shot, I admit to that. <laughs> But that kid, two kids came back, grabbed the water guns and start. But they would run over by the other booths, and I couldn't shoot because there was other people over there. But yet they had no problem shooting me when there was enough uh, people behind me. So, but anyway, it was a lot of fun, and we were able to get uh, the you know the church out there to, to offer up all, all the different things that we're doing. And uh, I think the coolest thing out of everything was. Uh, um, got to meet a few couples that uh, say they're in search of a church. And uh, so we got to tell them about the church, and they said that sometime maybe they'll stop in. And uh, so we're excited to be able to, to share that with others um, in the community. <coughs> also, today we have a luncheon after the service. Uh, we're having pizza, so there's a lot of pizzas back there, so I hope you'll stay for that. 
Um, also, we're gearing up for our Share the War. Uh, October 7th, we're going to start putting uh, coats out here on our fence. And uh, so we are taking gently used or new coats. I'll get to you in a second, Jackson. And uh, we're going to hang those out on the fence. And uh, so we do that up all the way up into like November, December until we run out. Um, just as a reminder to everybody, last year we gave out over 250 coats uh, to the community. So we're excited to do that. And uh, um, yesterday when we were sharing with a lot of people that we're geared up for the share the warmth and putting the coats on the fence. And I know that church. And uh, so uh, it's pretty exciting to be a part of that. So that's coming up. Yes, Jackson, what was your... Yes, we do. The pepperoni <laughs> pizza? Yes, we do. I see it. it, it right after church, pepperoni pizza has got your name on it. Okay, so we told around for church. Yep, right after church. You don't even have to drive. So. <laughs> see, that's the kind of excitement you need in the church. <laughs> Um, also, this year, new to this year, is kind of a spin-off of our Share the Warmth, is we're doing Operation Harley. Uh, Operation Harley is, if you see here, we have these buckets, and uh, they're for uh, pets. And so this one here, we have uh, uh, some Meow Mix, and we have a blanket, as everybody knows that pets have to lay down on a blanket, and little toys that... Uh, I'm not a cat person, but a little toy that you can kind of chase the cat around or kind of thing. But we have things for dogs and cats, and so we're going to make that part of our ministry as well. And uh, so we're taking those, and we'll put those in plastic bags and also hang them out on the fence. And uh, so that, and then on the 29th, we have the trunk or treat. So some people have already started... Um, with their games for that. So uh, we got a lot of things coming up in the next month or so. So uh, yeah, that's all this month. Yes, Frank. Um, I did place the financial report through August in the back and in the front. All right. If you want one, they're available. Okay. And so the, in the narthex and, the, and the, in the front, we have the financial report. So if you'd like to grab one of those, you can grab those and uh, just see where we're at here in the church and the things that we've been talking about. So. Um, so I think that's all I have. So let's have a word of prayer and then we'll go to the call to worship. Father God, we thank you and praise you for this time that we have together. Coming to worship, coming to worship in the church is, is about the fellowship that we have together, but it is also, and I think even more importantly, is that we come into the presence of God. So when we come together and worship, we believe that God is here himself. And so, Father, we are experiencing this message that you have for us today in your presence. And so, Father, we just are thankful that not only do we hear the word of God, but we also get to sing praises to our God. So in all these things, Father, we lift our hands to you. We offer ourselves to you during this time of worship. Father, we know in the message and the scripture that there is something that you have for us to hear. And so we pray that each and every one of us this morning... Have our minds open and our hearts receptive to the Word of God this morning. In all these things, Father, may you be glorified through the service that we have today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was just want to see Sheila Hanowitz is watching from Maryland today. Oh, Sheila Hanowitz is watching from Maryland. So, we're in, I think we get to mark our calendar for yep. that one. So, um, <laughs> so we got lots of, we have a picture of the United States and we marked it from all over and um, a couple of weeks ago, my sister watched from Hawaii, or Alaska, so, and my son, I'm going to ask for prayers for them, son, my son and family are going to Hawaii in the 22nd, and so I told them they have to tune in from Hawaii so we can mark the, the, the United States, so, he said, yeah, we'll see how that works, he said, you better remind me, so, so anyway, um, let's see, let's join together in the call to worship. Children of God, when we face strife, upset, and harm in our midst, we so often turn to God and ask, How many times should I forgive? When Jesus answers that we should forgive again and again and again, we are tempted to repeat the question, How many times should I forgive? Until God turns the question around, 
How many times have I forgiven you? Seven, seven times seven. seven. How many times have I loved you? Seven, seven times seven. How many times has my grace been sufficient for you? Seven, seven times seven. Let us learn then how to forgive, not out of our own power, but out of God's, who forgives us that we might be free to learn to live with one another well. Amen. Amen. Let us all join together in our opening hymn, which is Crown Him with Many Crowns. Do you please stand if you can? <laughs> scripture alone and different things that I researched. So the question that was asked is this, how did different languages come about? In other words, if we, if we all came from the same place, where did all the different languages come from? And so in there I did, I did some research about some different things and, and there's a lot of things out there if you Google it and you go on the internet, there's, a, there's a, the evolution of, of the different languages. There's also through evolution, it talks about in there that like from the apes that the, the vocal, uh, voice box is a little bit higher so they can never speak words but they can still communicate through the noise that they, they give. But humans, that the voice box is a little lower so they're able to, to make words and communicate that way. There's also this theory and that theory and all these different things that are out there. 
Um, but in there, um, I'm not one that bases anything off of evolution. And so I'm going to base my answer off of the scriptures. And the scriptures tell us in Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9, and uh, it starts out this way. Now the whole world, the whole earth, had one language and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found, they found a plain in the land of Sinar, and they dwelt there. In other words, the, this is uh, coming after the, the great flood, and so it was many years after that. It depended on where you look or who you talk to or what research you do. It could be anywhere from 200 to 700 years after the flood. So there was this, this, they traveled to the east of Sinar, and when they got there, they began to live there. And so this is the people that had been uh, producing from uh, the, the family, and uh, uh, Noah's family. So in there, it say, continues to say this. They said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city that's key and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. In other words, they, they traveled to the east, and they traveled to Sinar, and when they got there, they, they were so full of themselves, they began to build, let's build ourselves a city. And let us build a city, uh, let us build a tower that will reach all the way up into the heavens. And as it reaches up into the heavens, they are making a name for themselves. So in other words, this, this is totally separate from following God or believing that God reaches down and talks to the people. They began to think that they were needed to make the name for themselves. Let us build this city for ourselves because God won't provide. And so they began to pull away from God. And so after that, it continues on here, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed the people are one, and they are of one language. In other words, they're working together, they're communicating all this, and this is what they begin to do. In other words, separate themselves from God. They would build all these things for themselves. And so it says in there, Now nothing that they, and this is a key sentence in there, said, now nothing they, uh, that they propose to do will be withheld from them. In other words, God is not going to take away this working together and building these cities, but what he's going to take away is the fact that they are taking this upon themselves and instead of relying on God. And so God, he continues in Genesis, he says, come, let us go down, down and there confuse their language. And they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad all over the face of the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name uh, is called Babel, because there the Lord confused their language and all the earth, and there the Lord scattered them abroad all over the face of the earth. Now, in there... Why did he do this? Why did he confuse them? They were working together. Everything was working good. But the reason he confused them is because they were pulling, once again, pulling themselves away from God. And they were relying upon themselves. In other words, their city. They would build these things so they would make a name for themselves. They would build this Tower of Babel so that they had access to heaven instead of going through God. And so God is taking taking this away and confusing them. I think what he's doing is making them work harder to do these things. Because he said, I won't, none of this will be withheld from you, but he's going to confuse them and make it more difficult and scatter them all over the earth. So there's a couple of things that I wanted to point out before that. I said that if depending on who you see, this was about 200 to 700 years after um, the flood. It was also, it took 107 years to build the Tower of Babel. And so in building that, you could say that this, this kind of came about, this confusion, about 307 years after the flood or 807 years after, after the building of the, the, the Tower of Babel. But in this to say 
I just say, I don't really have an opinion. I don't go with the evolution thing on why languages. I don't go with the fact that everybody was scattered all over and they, and they just began to learn and learn how to communicate. I was, uh, I kind of compared it to where, um, when I was working in the, in the weld shops, I had a lot of friends that were from Mexico and I had a couple of friends, they would teach me how to say certain words and I would go over to another friend and I would say that word in Spanish and he, we didn't have a clue what I was saying. And I was like, well, Shorty just told me that this is how you say this. And then I'd go over and ask him. He said, oh, he speaks a different dialect. Now, I don't know what that means, but I, had, I just figured that they adapted wherever they were. But in here, I think the most important part is God confused them for the simple reason is they were pulling away from him and making them work harder. But he did not take anything away from them. The hard work and the building the cities and all that, he didn't take it away from them. He just confused them and made them work harder. So my answer scripturally is that at the, after the building of the city of Sinar and building of the Tower of Babel, that, that God confused them and that's where the different languages came from. That is kind of interesting, but if you're, you want to follow up, if you're into the you, you, evolution and all that kind of stuff, there's a whole lot of things you can go out there, but I, mean, I do not base my, you know, uh, answers on that. I base it off of the Bible, the scriptures. Let's pray. Oh. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this time together. And uh, Father, we sometimes see even today how we've kind of um, pulled ourselves away from relying on God. And so what we want to do here is to see this this story of uh, people who scattered all over the world speaking different languages and how they needed to come back to to put in their faith and their trust into God. And so our Father in Heaven does not keep us from achieving anything, but sometimes He makes us work really hard to achieve that just so that we know that it came from Him and not of our own free will or, or our own might or our own power. And so, Father, we just uh, take this story and this message so that we can see that we need to come back to God and, and to trust in Him as well. And all these things, may you be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we come together in our time of prayer, do you have any joys or concerns to share this morning? Yeah. yeah. Margaret Kathy? and George. Who, who is the first? Margaret and George. Margaret and George. Kira? My friend Noah has surgery coming up. Noah's head facing surgery. Yes, Shirley? My usual list. Your usual <laughs> list, and God knows. So <laughs> Jackson? <laughs> Pardon me? Smith, Smith girls. Smith girls, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Janet? Mary and Mary. Lindsay's got to have a Mary and who? Yeah. Lindsay. Lindsay. Oh, you're going to have the procedure? Uh, Mary and Lindsay. Frank? Uh, Norman T, the Red Hawks and Josh, family unity. And then also for uh, Betty's family, her brother Russell passed away on, on Friday morning. Yeah. Uh, Betty's been asking for prayers, uh, Betty Tetzlaw, for a, a while for her brother, and he passed away this week, so keep Betty in your prayers and all the family. Shirley? Maybe if, since we don't have a working directory at this point, mm -hmm. maybe if Ann could send out the info for Betty and for... Um, oh, Kathy? Kathy, okay. yeah. So right. we could send a card for Okay. Or see if they need anything, right. meals or anything like that. Perfect. Yes, uh, Betty, you had your hand up? Yes, I did. Yes. Um, Chuck and our children, uh, Bob and Jerry in Florida, and an extra special prayers for my brother Bob. He's still in the hospital and they're preparing him for Francisville here soon. Mm -hmm. No, oh, sorry to hear that. And traveling mercies for his son, who's here from Florida. Uh, <coughs> yes, Linda? My brother Gary in Texas. Gary? <laughs> Jackson, you got another prayer? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Any online? Or that's, no. Um. Susie's asking for prayers for Jane. 
So Susie's asking first for her mom, Jane. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for um, this time of being in the presence of God. And Father, when we come together and worship, we're truly just drawing ourselves closer to you. And we know throughout the week that sometimes the, 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 the hectic schedules and the busy time just kind of pull ourselves away from you. And so we're, we're kind of reconnecting, redrawing ourselves back to you so that we can be more centered in our faith. And so Father, today we have lifted up the joys and the concerns that were on our hearts this morning. And you have heard the names of those that we are lifting up. And truly we do lift up, you know, Kathy and, and Betty and her church as, as two that are, you know, face, one facing surgery and the loss of her, her brother. And, and just truly we, our hearts are um, being poured out to them. But Father, we know that each and every one of those names that were mentioned, that, that truly they are a child of God. They are somebody that needs to be lifted up in prayer. And that's our time with you to lift them up as well. And so, Father, as we come together, we pray that this day that we can continue to grow in our faith. And, Father, we, and as we grow in our faith through our prayers, we also want to remember to lift up the men and women of our military, those at home and those um, who are traveling overseas. We lift up their families and the struggles that they continue of uh, being separated from their loved ones. We know that there are difficult times in their families and, and just trying to, to raise kids and uh, to feed them and take care of the home and all that where their loved ones are so many miles away. But in all these things, Father, we trust that you are there in each and every one of those situations. And so, Father, I pray this day for those who um, lifted up those prayers this morning. Sometimes I think we miss that and the struggle that is going on in their life and knowing that a family friend or a loved one is going through such a tragic experience. And so, Father, we want to lift up those who are offering prayer to you this morning. Father, we continue to lift up those who silently in their hearts spoke a prayer concern um, to you this morning. And so, Father, that is another opportunity for someone to grow closer to you. We are thankful for all those that that we met yesterday who were in search of a church and we continue to lift them up, that their journey to a church is successful by reaching out to you. But in all these things, Father, may you receive the glory. No, no pastor, no priest, nobody in the church can bring peace and comfort other than you. And so you are the head of the church. You are the head of this church. You, this is, we, we are the body but it is you who are the guiding light for us in this community. So it is you that we reach out to this morning. And so, Father, in all these things, may you be glorified as your people come together and remember the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I see that I was twisted and aimed the other way again. So glad everybody had their eyes closed. Last week I asked that the trustees start working on a little, like a garage door light. And when I get off center, it starts to beep and I can focus back. So. <laughs> Today is uh, we're, the, the sermon title is How Many Times? And the passage that we kind of think about a lot is Matthew 18, when Peter is addressing Jesus, how many times uh, must I forgive? And uh, But I think today we're going to hear in Paul's letter to the Church of Corinth in the Book of Romans. We're going to hear how um, in there Paul is addressing that do not judge other people. And I think these two passages go very well um, together. And so we're going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about Matthew, but we're going to read today out of uh, Romans 14, 1 to 12. And this is uh, Paul's words about judging to the Church of Corinth. <coughs> Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while 
The weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld for the Lord's, is, yeah, the Lord's is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all the fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe in honor of the Lord, and those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For, this, for to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for this message this morning that comes to us from Paul's letter to the church of Corinth. We are thankful because in it, it says that the doors are open wide to all because God has invited them here. So we do not stand in judgment. We stand to embrace all that come to, the, to God's invitation. And so as we gather here today, we pray that each and every one of us can hear the message that you have for us this morning. God's word for us as people of God. Let us take that message and learn from it as we grow, as we are all sinners before Christ Jesus. Let us know that we can stand before him because of what he has done for us, not for what we have done within the church. In all these things, Father, we pray that you may be glorified by our words, our conversation, our time together. But most of all, may we truly hear within our hearts what you have for us to hear today. In all these things, Father, we come together in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As I said, Matthew 18, verses 21 to 22 is what I'm going to make reference to today. It's because of the fact that I think it's very significant and kind of leading into what we're going to hear out of the book of Romans. And that is, I'll read those two passages to you. Peter is asking Jesus a simple question. But I think he, I think he knows more than what we give him credit for when he says this. In 21 it says this, Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus responds to him in verse 22, he said, not seven times, but I tell you 77 times. So this seems to be an extravagant number, a lot, a high number. But I think one of the things that I think gets overlooked in the, in the verse 21 is the fact of what Peter says to Jesus. He says, how many times should I forgive? Seven times. Now we think of this as kind of a small number, you know, Hey, I can forgive that person seven times. That's pretty good. But I don't know about going seven, 77 times. That's kind of a high number. But I think we have to look at it in the Israelite culture at that time. What the number seven even meant to Peter. See, he asked, how many times do I, must I forgive? Seven times. Seven, the number seven in the, in the <coughs> Israelite culture is a symbolic number in the scriptures that means that of completeness and fullness. That's what just the number seven means. 
A few months ago, I tell you, one of the questions was about forgiveness. And I said, in forgiveness, one of the things that we forget, it is important for us to forgive because it, it frees us of the bondage that we have and, and that, that it holds on to us in not forgiving someone. It frees us from the bondage of receiving the grace of Christ when we don't forgive. So we need to forgive immediately, but what we don't have to do is trust. Trust is earned. It's not given. So many times I've heard that said to me. Trust is earned, not given. So in forgiving, it does not mean that you trust someone again immediately, but you forgive them to free yourself from the bondage that keeps you from the completeness and fullness of Christ Jesus. I think that's key. And that's one of the things in, Matt, in uh, Matthew's writing there, where pa Peter asked Jesus, how many times must I forgive? Seven. <clears throat> Seven is a holy number in the Israelite culture. <clears throat> Seven is a number that symbolizes completeness and fullness. This is not just a number that Peter says. This is a number that means completeness and fullness. And it's a holy number. He's using a significant number for a reason. So when we look at the number 77, so often we bring it up in the church, we say that means an infinite number. But what I would like to say to you, and maybe even you know, for the first time that you've thought of this, is seven is not just 77. I think that's a number that we can kind of just put it into it. In other words, if I forgive somebody 77 times, it's over and done with, but it's not. I'm here to tell you that what Jesus was telling Peter is this, not seven times, but twice as many as that holy number. Seven, seven. In other words, it's twice as much as what you said. In other words, it's twice as much as the completeness and fullness of God. It's twice as much as the grace. That's how much we should be offering to other people. It's an infinite number because of it's a holy number in the Israelite culture. So I think we don't do it justice by saying seven. I don't think we do it justice by saying 77, or in some cases, seven times 70. I think we don't do it justice. What it is and what Jesus is saying is that this is an infinite number. This is a, this is a holy number. This is the completeness and the fullness of God that is offered to you. And two times that. That's how many times you should be offering forgiveness to others. This is a huge step. This is a huge thought. And maybe for us in our human minds, it's just incomprehensible in the world in which we live in today. But I want you to think about this. In not forgiving, we are limiting ourselves in receiving the grace of Christ. We are limiting ourselves in experiencing the completeness and the fullness of Christ in not forgiving. Seven, twice that amount. In other words, in the fullness and the completeness offered to you through Jesus Christ, that's what's offered to you in this 77th time. So in the church, how are we to act? How are we to be? Think about it for a minute. We live in a culture, we live in a time where forgiveness really isn't talked about much. In other words, it's kind of the last thing in the culture that we live in. When somebody hurts you, it's kind of the last thing that we want to offer. It's not something we immediately respond with is, hey, I forgive you. But how in the church are we to be in here? I think that what we are to be and what God is calling us, what he calls us, that we are to react counterculturally. In other words, that should be the first thing that's on our mind. Is the same the, the, the same forgiveness that was given to you is also as what we offer to other people. And I think that leads us into our scripture today when we look at the book of um, Romans and what Paul was saying in his letter. And the first part he says in here, and I think this is kind of key, it says, welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. So in other words, when we gather in the church, as Paul is speaking to the church in court, when we gather here, it's not about sharing our opinions. It's not about quarreling about our opinions and our different beliefs. What it is, is it's about opening up the doors to all 
And we're going to kind of get into Paul's letter and how he's speaking here about who is welcome. Do you realize, we're, we're looking in here and it says those who eat and those who abstain, those who eat vegetables and all that kind of stuff. That in there, that was a huge obstacle in those days. There were certain things that you absolutely never positively would ever eat. After I finished tech, we were all standing back, standing back there, and they, they got to talking in the back. There was all, have you ever eaten beaver? Have you ever eaten possum? Have you ever eaten, you know, groundhog? And all this kind of stuff like that. They even got into oysters. And I know a lot of people eat oysters. I got a friend of mine. I'm not opposed to trying it. That slimy thing just doesn't make it for me. Maybe if you can deep fry it, I'd be all about trying. And so that that it, it's just slimy is it, just something I kind of pull away from. And so in there, when you kind of talk about all this, there's certain things that we that we even today that there are people said there is no way I'm ever going to eat that. Somebody else said, oh, I'll try that. I'll try that. I'll try. Oh, there's no way I'm going to eat that. It's the same thing back then. There are certain things that you absolutely, positively never ate because it was against the law of the Torah. It was against that of God. You did not eat these things. And so Paul is saying to the church of Corinth that it doesn't matter. There are people that eat, and there are people that eat vegetables, and there are people that abstain. And what it is is that we do not pass judgment upon them. And then I think one of the keys in here, in, our, in verse 4, it comes up there and it says, um, uh, well, no, I'm going to read this at the end of that. It doesn't matter what they eat or what they eat the vegetables or they don't eat it all, they abstain or all that says, God has welcomed them into the church of Corinth. God has invited them to come and be in the church. And then he goes on in verse 4, he says, who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? That is key, because in the second part of our verse 4, it says in here, it is, it is before their own Lord, and if you're looking in the scriptures, Lord at that time is a, a small L. It is not speaking about the Lord our God and who we serve. It is talking about all the other gods that are in the culture of that day. And so it said in there that, it is before their own Lord that they will stand or they will fall. In other words, I'm going to pass this question. There was something that I kind of thought about this week, and, it, and I got to think about it a lot. But I want to, I'm going to pass. I like passing these questions on you, make you think about things for a while. And if God has invited everyone into the church, God, whether they eat or whether they abstain, whatever it is, God is invited. And Paul says, God is in, who are we to judge? God has invited them here. So I'm going to ask you this. Should we worry about those who serve other gods, small g? Should we worry about others who serve other lords, small l? In other words, all the other gods of this culture that we live in, should we worry about them? After all, they made the choice. Should the Lord my God, in who I serve, should he worry about them as well? They made their choice. To serve other gods. Absolutely. That's exactly what the scripture tells us. That it doesn't matter whether they abstain or whether they eat. It doesn't matter who they are, where they came from, where their history. It doesn't matter who it is. That God has invited them here. It doesn't matter that they serve another Lord. Paul says they will stand or they will fall in front of their Lord. But then the very next thing he says, and they will be upheld for the Lord, capital L, for the Lord, then for the Lord is able to make them stand. In other words, if they fall before the Lord that they serve, then it is our God who can make them stand. In other words, he is all powerful all over, over all other gods of the world. And he has invited them into this church, our church, to be a part of this. <clears throat> Verse 9 says, For to this, for to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Now when you hear that passage in that verse, it says the dead and the living. 
It's not talking about those who have died before Christ. It's not talking about those who had died before Paul wrote this letter. It's talking about those who were dead in faith. In other words, serving other God. And Paul says that, that he might be the Lord of both the dead, in other words, those who come to know him, or those who are living. The living are those who have professed Jesus as Savior. So then he goes on in verse 10, why do you pass judgment? And then he reaffirms that, why do you pass judgment? Because all, all people, dead and living, all people will go before him. And Paul says in verse 11, for it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God, so that each of us will be accountable to God. So what does that mean? What does that mean for us? First of all, I absolutely do believe that the Lord our God should stand for everyone. I do believe that our God loves and has invited everyone into this church to hear his message today. And I think each and every one of us should embrace those who come into this church. So should we pass judgment on others? Paul says, absolutely not. Because everyone will one day go before the Lord our God. And he will hold them accountable. And Paul says, they will bow before him. And they will praise God. So today, how many times, how many times do we forgive? See, I think we take the first part of Matthew too seriously. Peter said in there at the beginning part, he said, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how many times do I have to forgive me? Boy, do we look for loopholes. Man, that's a loophole right there. I have some, if someone in the church sins against me, how many times do I have to forgive them? But hey, what if they don't go to church? What if they don't go to my church? Does that mean I don't have to forgive them? Boy, that looks like a loophole to me. But God says, Jesus referred to him, he said, no, not seven times, but seven he said. Twice as much as you said. An infinite number. Dot, dot, dot. I say that we should think of it in an infinite number because we look at these things and it, give me a number. Give me something that I set my goal for. But after that, it's okay because I'm free and clear. I don't have to forgive anymore. But it's not. It's an infinite number. No matter how many times someone sins against you, in the church or out of the church, no matter how many times you are to forgive. Remember the question in our call to worship. Not how many times do I have to forgive, but how many times has God forgiven you? I say to you, how many times will God continue to forgive you after you leave the church today? It's an infinite number of times until the day we come to see Him again. The message for us is not how many times. It's how many times will he forgive us. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Sometimes we need to just kind of change our way of thinking, change our way of our thoughts. To kind of really bring ourselves back in line with you. Truly, we can't understand why anyone would serve another God. The Egyptians served many gods. And so that doesn't seem comprehensible to us, but we've received the grace of Christ. We've been forgiven. We will continue to be forgiven. We don't pass judgment. That's God's job. So Father, today, we embrace your message for us. We embrace the the responsibility that we have here in the church. We embrace the, the this swimming upstream, living counterculturally. We embrace the risk that it may have 
We, we embrace how scary it may be to, to fan the flames of anger and hatred and vengeance in this world. We're not afraid to go where others may not want to because of the fact that we know that we go with you. Father, you are our strength and our guiding light. And so today we embrace not just the grace we have, but we embrace the time that we have in going out into the world and showing others the grace of Jesus Christ for themselves. So today, we are thankful. We are thankful for the opportunity that you have bestowed upon us, but we are also thankful for the days and the months and the years from this time to share the good news of Christ Jesus. So through all these things, Father, we pray that our lives, the lives of this church, can glorify you as we continue to reach out into a community and, and just go against the culture, what the culture says we should be. Because in you, we are to be different. In you, we are to embrace the love of Christ. So Father, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity to be together today. As people of God, children of God, taking the message of Jesus Christ into the community. Four walls will never stop us. The culture and what it says will never stop us. Because we are empowered by that of which we are weak without. And that's Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all join together in our closing hymn, Freely, Freely. ourselves, but go in his name and freely, freely give. Amen. Amen.
share with you real quick um, just how Kira learned something. And uh, the first time she came up here, the fan was on and it blew the, can the candle lighter out. And so she had to have it relit. And when she got up here this time, she'd come up here knowing she was going underneath the fan, took her hand and covered the light. What an example it is for us in, in the light of Christ as we carry it out into the world. Sometimes the wind, the, the, the breeze, the fan, the evil, the injustice, all that out there, that sometimes it blows out the light of Christ. But we need to learn from that and cover that light and not let anyone blow that out. I'm going to pray for the meal so everybody can just go back and get started eating. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for this time that we have together in fellowship over this meal. We thank you and ask for a blessing to fall upon the hands of those who prepared this meal. And we pray that you can bless each and every one of us. May